So I'm Jeff Ravenhall. Uh, I've been in the mower industry for, what, 35 years? Started out at Breakwells back in the mid 80s as a mechanic and progressed through uh, into sales uh, for the last 30 years. Um, I've been selling ransoms pr uh, primarily and John Deere, always concentrating on the professional side of machinery. Well, from my father-in-law, the um, my great passion is trusty tractors, which you've never heard of, um, but they were used on the horticultural uh, scene, and um, they're basically two wheels with an engine on the front and an attachment on the back. They're about 10 foot long and they weigh about half a ton and they balance on the two wheels. And I've been restoring those, collecting them for the last 30 years. Um, Father-in-law used to talk about them at length and uh, being on the edge of the Vale of Evesham where we are, uh, there's a ready supply of old ones in sheds, so why wouldn't I? You could pick them up for a tenner, and um, it was, uh, you know, as soon as you finish one, put it to one side, go out and find another one. And uh, as, you, as you collect them, you tend to find more and more interesting bits in them, and I've got to the stage now where I've actually written two books on them. So that uh, tended to rule me life, I dare say. Um, for the last 15 years, I've been chairman of the Vintage Horticultural and Garden Machinery Club. Uh, we've had a, a website going since I started. Um, the club has actually s was started back in 93, uh, but at the moment I'm the longest serving chairman. And um, we, uh, well, all of our club members tend to collect anything, well, just having an interest in horticultural or garden machinery tends to um, qualify you for joining. Um, how did I get involved in this project? Well, a bit of a long story, but last year at Soltex, at the NEC, um, one of our club members, Andrew Hall, um, who's the archivist for the Hall and Duck Trust, um, he was asked to provide a stand of old mowers to uh, celebrate 75 years of groundsmanship, which is what we did. He provided all the mowers, but he came to me to say, uh, he hadn't got insurance. The NEC wanted uh, insurance for public liability, which he hadn't got. So if anyone saw our stand at the NEC, uh, you'd have seen VHGMC banners up, which is the club that I'm chairman of. And we provided the insurance and the overall uh, administration, and Andrew provided all the uh, machinery. Um, after the show, Andrew was contacted by Sean at Allet uh, to say, we've got a mower, can you restore it? Uh, Andrew uh, doesn't tend to have anything newer than 1939. He tends to use the Second World War as his bit of uh, his cut-off time. So he asked me if I knew of anyone. Um, I did know someone at the time. Um, who was interested, but then he had health issues. I did the initial uh, preparatory work by going to the factory uh, just to see what state it was in and uh, relayed it back to him. But um, his health deteriorated, so I took the job on myself back in the uh, middle of April. And uh, oh, it's taken till end of August to get to this stage, but it's been a worthwhile job, I find. Well, there was so much of the original um, machine there. The trend these days is to um, preserve originality rather than um, make it look new. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, 
um, in the pres preservation world, a lot of the machinery you'd see at shows would be shiny, brand new, but these days ev everything, the, well, ev the concentration is on originality and preserving it. I mean, the way I, pre the way I talk to people at shows, you know, if they say, well, it looks a bit, bit mucky, yeah, but it's original. And the big thing is, originality is only there once. If I'd taken this and shop blasted it and painted it new, all its history is gone. So you've got to try and preserve as much of that history as you can. And it's, it's quite nice to go to a show with a machine and come across its previous owner. You know, and they'll look around it and have a look at things and, oh, I'll put that dent in there. Yeah, and yeah, my work is done in that case. Um, I've left the dent. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it might not look all shiny, but you can you can actually argue the fact that a lot of the um, machines that used to win prizes at these shows um, were overdone. They never used to look as good as that, and it got to the stage where some of the uh, winners of, of prizes. Um, they were pushed in. They hadn't got oil in them because it might leak and um, things like that. Well, I don't do that. Anything I do has to work. If there's a lever that does something, it has to work. So that's what I've done with this. And um, yeah, it should work now every bit as well as when it was first put together. Challenges. Yes, in trying to keep it as original as possible. Um, my first view of it at the factory was, it's got a lot of original paint left on it. Um, when I actually came to uh, start doing it, what I thought was original paint wasn't original. It had been put on there um, well, the original paint had been covered up with an orange coloured primer, which seemed to have lumps in it and things, and, uh, and then a coat of green paint over the top. So it was very difficult. Whatever panels I could, I, I preserved as, as best I could. But there were some bits that were just beyond it, which I've had to uh, overpaint. And... Um, that's really how how it's come up, you know come to be now um it's a bit of a you know some of it's new some of it's old first thing i did was I, I wanted to know what state the engine was in when it was uh, first delivered um whether i got to take the engine out and rebuild the engine or not so the first thing was to get the engine going um so it was surprising really a clean carburetor and um messed around with the distributor there were various pieces missing out of the distributor and um i put all that back to how it should be and lo and behold it started uh so it actually um sounded quite well so i, I did a few adjustments and adjusted the tappets and whatever uh, changed the oil um, and then went round making a list of things like fuel pump, uh, spark plugs, you know, uh, breaker points, all those standard things that you tend to do on a service. And um, looked on the uh, Reliant Owners Club website and found that one of the chaps that was advertising parts was quite close down by Malvern. Um, so I went down there with a shopping list and got most of the bits. Some of it, some of the parts were new, uh, manifold gaskets and things, and rocker cover gaskets. But uh, one thing I wanted was uh, an engine oil filter. And uh, the chap there said, uh, "Afraid not. I've been cleaning those out with white spirit 
for a long time and putting the old ones back on. You won't get one of those now. So, um, well, I've put this on our uh, club forum on a blog that I was doing on there, and um, a couple of days later, uh, two of the lads down in Sussex came back and said, "Have you looked on eBay at this?" And it was a Morris Minor oil filter, and it looked the part. So, and it was ten pounds plus a bit of postage. So I thought, well, for ten pounds, I'll chance me on. And when it came, yeah, it fitted. It was about half an inch longer than the, st than the one I'd taken off, but I thought, well, I'll try it. And um, yes, the, as you can see, the cover fits. It's very close, but there's about a quarter of an inch gap there, and the gap's a gap. So why not? So yeah, and there's all sorts of little bits and pieces that um, I've come across. You know, I've used in the main I've used um, local suppliers to recondition bits you know like the uh, radiators had a recore um, but the uh, the chap that did it has kept the original maker's plate soldered to the header tank which I asked him to do which you know if you send it away and get it done on a factory production line you wouldn't get that kind of service so I've tried to tried to use local suppliers wherever I can uh, same with the Dynamo. Um, I've used um, this local chap for all the stuff I've used at work, and uh, yeah, absolutely mustard. So yeah, always try and use local people where you can. Well, one of the one of the things that I've found most valuable every now and again, I've come across something that I can't answer. Um, something tricky because. Somebody else has maybe had a mess with it. So I found it very valuable to have um, the phone number for Roy Allett. Um, he's always answered the phone, no matter when I phoned him. And he's always had the answer to hand. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so you can't, you can't put a price on that kind of information. And he's always come, you know, come up with, uh, with the answer that I've wanted anyway. So um, thanks very much, Roy, if you're looking. Well, now it's off to um, it's off to the uh, reception area at the Alec factory at Hickson. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm going to have to have a look for something else to fill my garage now. But uh, I hope you uh, take good care of it. It's uh, it's taken about four months of my life, and uh, there's a lot of me in this now. So take good care of it, please. I'll start it up and, oh, hang on. Make sure it's not in gear. Start. Yeah, that's it. It's a bit cold at the minute, but uh, when it warms up, it's absolutely perfect. For an engine that hasn't had any work done on it internally, it's absolutely brilliant. So I can't, uh, I can't emphasize you know, the quality of these engines. Absolutely brilliant. I'll turn it off. Petrol's a lot of money these days. <laughs> 